Hello and welcome back to the channel. The most popular question that I'm getting from people is what editor I am using and how I configured it. Actually, I am using Veeam plus Alacrity Terminal plus Tmux. And if you are interested in such setup, in this video I will show you the top layer how this all stuff is working together. Let's jump right into it. So the first question is why I am using Veeam and not some normal editor like VS Code or Intelligence Idea or something else. And actually I can tell you that I used almost all editors that are or were popular in last 10 or 11 years. This is why I know what I am talking about. So normally I have in all editors two main problems for me. And actually all editors except of Veeam and Emacs are similar in these problems. So the first problem is that they are slow. Why they are slow? Because you are getting a lot of features from them, even if you don't need these features. And actually every next feature is making your editor slower. It doesn't matter what editor it is, this is how it works, you can't really get new features without making it slower. This is why actually what I want to get is editor without any features or at least the small amount of them, so I can really wisely choose what features I need for my development so it really works fast. And the second problem that normally all editors are not that configurable. So for example even in VS Code, which is really popular editor, there is a problem which for me sounds like super basic and it should be removed. So actually I have a sidebar with all my list of files and I just want to make it bigger. So normally should not be a problem, but if we see here there is a GitHub issue for exactly this problem. I want to change the font size in my sidebar. And as you can see how many people want this feature and it was opened 5 years ago and this problem is still there, so there is still no configuration for such basic stuff. And actually the hacky solution for this problem that people are using is just scaling the whole editor. So you are like saying that you want to scale it not by 1 but 1.2 and then you need to downsize your font because everything will be scaled. And this is the example why editors are not that configurable for me and why I want something better. And the second part of this non-configurable problem is that you can't really change all key bindings that you want. So sure you can change some basic ones, but not to make you really high efficient in your editor. And the same goes with plugin, normally you are getting some key binds there and you can't really change them for yourself. This is why I am using Vim Editor. It is completely free, it exists more than 30 years, it doesn't have a lot of features by default, but it is extremely difficult to learn it. And of course it is highly configurable, you can also extend it with plugins and normally you can create lots and lots of key binds exactly for your every case. But of course Veeam is not a silver bullet and I highly recommend you to stick to editor like VS Code or whatever you like if you are just started to learn programming and you just need editor to type code. This is completely fine. The point of spending time in other editors like Veeam or Emacs maybe is when you really are typing the whole day and you don't think that much about features but you are really tired of typing a lot. So you really need to be efficient in typing and working with text. And this is where Veeam really shines. And actually I am using not Veeam itself, here is the official web page of Veeam, but Neo Veeam. And this is the fork of Veeam only for console. And the first question is of course why I want to write my code inside console. First of all I don't need additional program for that, I can write code directly with Veeam inside my console. And secondly there are a lot of other tools that really play nicely with Veeam inside console. And I will show them later. And actually if you are interested in my Veeam config or you just want to check it, I will leave a link down in the description box below so you can check it out. So let's look on my typical editing with Veeam. As you can see I am inside console, so I don't need any additional programs, I am just opening here in Veeam, so Neo Veeam, and here I can do whatever I want with my code. As I already said, we configure Veeam with a lot of custom keybinds, and there are a lot of keybinds also by default. 
I should also mention that I'm not using mouse inside Vim at all. I'm just using it inside Chrome, for example. So Vim editor was intended to be used only with keyboard. This is why it is really fast and efficient. For example, here are several examples how I'm using Vim. And of course I have lots of custom keybinds and Vim by default has quite a lot of default keybinds. For example, let's say that we want to remove here one line. We just type dd and this line is removed. If we want to paste it, we just hit p and this line appears here. So actually it was not like removing, but like cutting. Also, Vim can nicely work with words, paragraphs, sentences or lines. So for example, if I want to change this word, I will just type change round word, so C A W, like change for C, then A around and then W word. And as you can see, this word was deleted and now I'm inside editing mode. So I can just type here, for example, foo. Also, it is really efficient if I want to change something inside, for example, quotes. So I want to change this editing word or maybe delete inside quotes. So let's delete this word. I'm saying delete inside and now the quote symbol. And as you can see, I removed everything. So normally in other editors, I really need to take my mouse and select this word and then click delete or cut. Of course I understand that all these keybinds are looking like magic, but after some time you can learn them and then you have them in your muscle memory. So normally when I'm doing some stuff, I'm not thinking what I should hit on the keyboard to remove a word. I'm simply doing this because this is already in my muscle memory. As I already said, there are not that many features inside Vim by default, and we can extend these features by installing additional plugins. So just like in normal other editors, you just install plugins and it works. But here is the important point. Normally all plugins are coming without keybinds and you really configure every single keybind that you want for this plugin. This is really nice when you want to improve your coding speed. And here I want to show you two plugins that are really done badly from my perspective in other editors and that are really shining inside Vim. So the first one is tabs. So normally we have tabs everywhere in every editor. Here on the top you have like tabs of all your opened files or maybe in your Chrome and normally you have like 10, 20 or 100 of them. So actually if you have more than three, you don't really know what tab is where and how you can easily find and switch to it. So actually from my perspective, tab is not what we need inside editor. And inside Vim, we also have tabs if you want to, but there are also buffers. And buffers is really a wide topic, but I just want to show you a single solution of buffer that I really like compared with tabs. So normally what I want to see is not tabs, but just files that I opened previously. So here I can hit my keybind, and as you can see here, I have the list of all files that I opened here. So normally I should not maintain tabs at all, because I don't need to sort them, this is just the list of old files. I just open it, and I know, okay, if I open it, I can choose it here. So I don't even need to see this bar with tabs, because it doesn't make any sense. The second feature that I don't like in other editors is file tree. And this is like super basic feature. This is looking like this. For example, in VS Code, you have your files on the left, you are clicking on them and you see your file that you opened on the right. And this sounds fine when you have just one file. But at the moment when you start to do splits, it's not that fine. Because just imagine here you have your sidebar and you have here four open splits. And you really need to remember in what split you are focusing, because then you are jumping to your sidebar, you are clicking here on the new file, and this file will be opened inside your current focus split. And actually it's not convenient for me at all, because I don't remember in what split I was, and then the file that I needed there is overwrite by a newly opened file. And yes, you can install such file tree inside Vim, it's not a problem, but there is also other solutions. And actually, I really like the behavior that we have here. So actually, let's say that we have split. 
and we know in what split we are, because we don't have sidebar, we simply open the file. And now if I will open the file tree, as you can see it is being opened inside this split. Not somewhere in the sidebar, but exactly here. This is why I know, ok, if I open here a file, it will be opened in this split. And it doesn't matter how many splits I have, I am being in some split, and then I open the file tree here, so I really know where it will be opened. And maybe now you are thinking, ok, but maybe all plugins that I am using inside my editor are not inside Vim. Yes, it can happen, but I highly doubt it. For example, if you want a file tree, you have it, even the default one, then you have something to work with Git, then you have a language server, if for example you are writing TypeScript, you can also configure Prettier, ESLint, file tree, file manager, whatever you prefer. Also, I said previously that Vim or NeoVim is really playing nicely with other console tool. And the main tool that I am using is Tmax. So what is Tmax? It is terminal multiplexer, which means this is the thing to create new tabs or new splits inside your terminal. So normally you have such functionality, for example inside iTerm or whatever terminal you prefer, but Tmax takes it on the next level. Why? Because actually Tmax runs a session, and we can close this session at some point and open it later. For example, as you can see here, I have a Monster Lessons Academy folder, and I can just close it completely. So as you can see, I am just inside my console, not inside Tmax. And then I can simply open the session of Tmax inside this folder. So as you can see, I am opening it, and everything is still there. So here I have my editor in exactly the same place like previously, here I have my web server, and here is my console. So everything stays there, even when we are closing our console. And normally you are using some iTerm, and then you have a lot of like splits, and you need a tab for everything like your web server, then your editor, and so on. And every time when you close your console or restart your machine, you really need to start everything from scratch. With Tmax you don't need this, because this is the hanging session, and you can always restore it to that point where you was. So actually this means that I can have like 10 or 20 sessions that are just hanging there, and I can always switch even like after one month inside, and it will be in exactly the same state like it was last time. And one more feature of Tmax, which is really important for me, is switching between projects. So normally if you are using some VS Code or PHP Storm, I really need to open several projects inside single window, or several editors. And actually both solutions are really not good. First of all, because we have a console and we have an editor, and they are not synchronized. Which means, for example, you work on a huge project and you have like 7 different repos. Which means you need to open 7 different projects and run, for example, 7 different web servers. This is completely possible if you are working in a huge team. So normally, if you are opening 7 editors and then 7 web servers, your machine is starting to die. And I don't have such problem, because Vim is super lightweight. And here I really can isolate my editor with web servers and terminal or tests maybe inside my single project. So as you can see here I have a project, Monster Lessons Academy, here I have editor, then web server and then terminal. And it is fully isolated. As you can see now I am hitting my key bind, and here I have all my active projects. So this is real project that I am using every day. And I can just in a matter of second switch to this project. Then just in a matter of second switch to another project, and they are just all running, and they are just Tmax sessions. This is why it is super fast, easy and flexible to switch between them. Also, I want to mention that I am not using Vim just to write code. I also write a lot of nodes inside Markdown. So as you can see here, I am just jumping in another project, and this is my wiki, actually this is just a bunch of Markdown nodes. So this is the easiest way to store all nodes in one place, this is just a git repo that I am editing with Vim. And actually I don't need any additional apps, I don't need to pay money for this, and my notes will be there until the end of my life, and I don't need any additional apps for them.
And this goes also for Vim, as you know there were a lot of editors like Sublime, then Notepad, then maybe VS Code, Atom, and some of them are really old and people are switching from one editor to another. And this is completely normal for people to jump from one editor to another after a year or two, when new editor is better and it is coming out. And actually I am already using Vim like 10 years and I am not planning on leaving it, because it is free, it is covering my needs and I don't see any benefits in other editors. Also there are a lot of other tools that are playing nicely together with Tmax and Vim. For example I am even listening music inside editor as you can see. And here I have key bindings like inside Vim. And the last piece of software that I didn't mention is my terminal. So here I have the official website, Alacrity. This is the terminal that doesn't have a lot of feature, but this is super fast. As you can see, Alacrity is a cross-platform fast terminal emulator and you don't have any features inside. This is why it is fast, so you don't have something like tabs, splits and so on, you just have a single window. And this is an amazing terminal if you are using something like Tmax, because you have all this stuff out of the box from Tmax, so you don't need this inside your terminal, and this makes your terminal really fast. So this was my Vim setup that I am using more than 8 years. And I am totally sure that this setup is not for everybody, but it really fits my workflow nicely. And I hope that here you found some ideas to improve your own workflow. And also, if you want to improve your programming skills, I have a lot of advanced courses regarding different web technologies. And if you are interested, I will link them down in the description box below, so don't forget to check them out. And if you like this video and you want more content like this, don't forget to put thumbs up to support me and subscribe to the channel. And as always, happy coding!